to our program of the original teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. My name is Naya Swami Hriman, and I serve at the Blue Lotus Temple in Bothell, Washington. Today is my third broadcast on the subject of intuition, which I take the uh, inspiration from the original written lessons that Yogananda published in the 1920s and 30s, and wherein he had two distinct written lessons on the subject of intuition and how to develop it consciously and creatively. So I'm continuing with the uh, lesson two from the Advanced Super Cosmic Science course. I just love the charming names he had for his courses and how to develop creative intuition. And so um, in my prior broadcast, I talked about how Yogananda has us develop intuition first by learning concentration, calm concentration, on developing the refinement of our five physical senses. It's interesting, isn't it? That developing calm focus on, let's say, the sense of sight can develop intuition. Partly it's calm and partly it's concentration. That's the key, because the five senses do convey to us information, but uh, they don't necessarily convey to us intuitive information by the virtue of their functionality. In other words, I can look all day at, uh, at the picture outside this window here, and unless my mind wanders and some intuition drops into my mind, the, the visual information isn't going to provide any intuitive information to me, probably, not likely. Um, but the reason he gives that as a technique is because it means focusing calmly on one object at a time. And that leads to meditation, which is the premier way of developing intuition. But anyway, he goes on then for today that um, he distinguishes that intuition is, as I've said before, the sixth sense. It's not dependent on the five senses. It's not dependent on logic. It's not dependent on your past experiences and the common sense and what you've learned from doing things over and over in, in the past. Intuition comes to us from another realm. Some call it the Akashic record. Some call it the um, Christ consciousness, the causal sphere whereby all ideas manifest. You can even say that it comes from the astral realm, which is the prototype of all things that exist. So we won't split hairs, causal versus astral, but it comes from a realm beyond the five senses, beyond the physical sphere. Now, he goes on to say we've all had hunches of various sorts, knew it would, perhaps knew that somebody would call us today. We knew that somebody would come over to visit us today. There's many, many times we just don't think much about it and consider it a coincidence or maybe we, you know, say, wow, I'm cool, I, I knew that. But, but we don't explore it any further and we don't, either have an interest in developing it as a, uh, as a power that we have, like the power of sight, uh, power of intuition, or even if we did, we don't know how to do that. And so um, we move on. Um, he, and what I'd like to do today, primarily actually, two things. One is to give you a guided meditation at the end, but now I'd like to read to you a story, okay? He said, um, intuition must be distinguished from self-sufficiency, from the superstition that because it worked so many times, it will always happen. Or the kind of person who is just a braggart. He calls it overworked confidence. Um, there are many psychological upstarts which pose as intuition and delude people, but real intuition can never be wrong. Okay, I once went to a farmhouse and met a man there who had semi-developed intuition. That was a term he used and I shared with you in an earlier broadcast. Semi-developed intuition means it's developed uh, not consciously and developed usually in, the, in a vertical way uh, in terms of 
you know, maybe this guy was a farmer. And so he had been farming for many years, was born into a farm. And so his ability to kind of know things about the animals or the weather, that kind of thing was, uh, you know, was, was, was a power he developed by virtue of association, long association and so on. Anyway, he bothered everybody with the display of his intuition. He tried it on me several times, Yogananda writes, until I had an overdose of his semi-intuitional practices and decided to wake him up. <laughs> One day, while we were sitting in the parlor and the door was closed, we heard footsteps. And I asked my semi-intuitive friend, will you please tell me who is at the door? He forthwith replied, it is my uncle coming home after many years, and he never even wrote me about it. The door opened and the uncle appeared. And when questioned, he verified the statement. And he said that he came suddenly without notification. My friend triumphantly exclaimed, see, I have fully developed intuition and not the semi-developed intuition as you often say. Then I remonstrated, my friend, beware, you will make a horrible blunder sometime because you have had a little intuition all your life, but you have not practiced the technique of developing it to the place where you can really depend on it. He laughed at me, but I soon had an occasion to laugh at him. My mischievous prayer was answered. <laughs> One dismal rainy day, we sat in the farm parlor again, when suddenly there was a loud knock on the closed door. I said to my friend, now use your semi-intuition and tell me who is knocking. He concentrated for a moment, his friend, and then said, my brother has unexpectedly arrived. Open the door. I laughed at him, Yogananda said and replied, no, not I. I wouldn't go anywhere near the door. My intuition tells me not to. You had better open the door yourself. Saying this, I ran to the other side of the room. <laughs> He opened the door and in rushed the farm bull with menacing horns, angrily seeking shelter from the rain. <laughs> My friend jumped aside frantically and the bull ran after me. Of course, I was prepared and just stepped aside loudly exclaiming, My friend, your semi-intuition indeed foretold about your brother arriving. <laughs> no bull. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to end now with a technique of developing intuition. It's in two stages. So you might want to sit up, right, and listen very, concentrate very calmly. Number one, learn to reason and to feel all the time. Well, reason, we kind of, we kind of know what reasoning is, but what does it mean to feel all the time? He's not talking emotions. He's meaning that calm sort of radar-like feeling radar-like state of mind that your, your constant thoughts become still and you feel. Okay, but here's really what I wanted to share with you. Number two, when you want to intuitively solve a problem, he writes, first go into deep meditation or silence. Interesting, he distinguishes deep meditation or silence. Okay. Don't think of your problem during meditation. Rather, meditate until you feel that sense of calmness that fills the inner recesses of your body and your breath becomes calm and quiet. Okay? Then concentrate simultaneously at the point between the eyebrows and the heart. Here. Sign of the cross, huh? What do you think? Then ask God to direct your intuition so that you might know what you should do about your problem. Okay, folks, that's it for today.